Hey everyone, it's Rag 1940 here, and today we're going to do an MCON tutorial on Sea Power Naval Combat in the Missile Age. Now, this is the Dormess with Texas scenario. I think it's a great one to learn about MCON, and you could try it different ways uh, to see how things play out. Now, MCON is short for Emissions Control, and the emissions we're talking about are the radar ones. So, if we set MCON, we can turn all these radars off. And the idea is to hide your position by not showing any sort of class IDs, which are specific radar types um, that the enemy might be able to ping uh, or pin to a certain ship class and say, oh, I know for sure that's a Belknap class because it's got these sets of radars and this set of fire control stuff and things like that. Uh, in real life, there's different types of MCON, um, but in this game, it's kind of just an on-off thing. So we're going to do that right now. We'll just test it out. I'll show you how to do it. Any ship or even any ship in the 3D world or on the map in the formation, we can right click, go to formation, go to formation orders, and then sensor orders and go to MCON. While we're here, uh, let's do this one more time. Go to formation orders, and we've got air defense orders. And these you should always use in uh, if you haven't used them yet in the game. They're really helpful. Weapons free basically is going to let the ship engage any air target that's a threat to it. Uh, weapons tight is only going to shoot at things like missiles that are inbound or aircraft that have shot at the ship. Uh, so right now because of our scenario it says we're not supposed to fire until fired upon so we'll just do weapons tight. But basically all the ships now, um, regardless of us being at MCON, are going to still use their uh, illuminators and stuff like that to fire missiles at incoming air targets if they are a threat uh, like an incoming missile. It's important we switch that to weapons free if we do get shot at so that we can engage enemy aircraft automatically. Now we turned our radars off. If you click on the other ships here, uh, you'll see that none of their radars are going. But we still have on the map some contacts. Now why do we have contacts if our radars are off? Well they're EM emissions, so we're detecting the radar signal that is coming from this item here, or this track. If I clicked on it, I can right-click, go to information, and it says here that all the ships in my flotilla have detected this guy with their ESM sensor, and they think it is a MiG-23 with the MiG-23's radar. Okay, the MiG-28, that's just an Easter egg thing. It's an F-5 and like, like in Top Gun, basically. They called it a MiG-28. That's uh, not what's in the scenario. It is a MiG it's some sort of MiG-23. Now, what is this uh, ESM sensor? Well, this is why people can use MCON to find things, even if our radar is not working. It's this little guy here. There's one on each side. Uh, on the Texas, looks a little different. Um, some of these are known as uh, Slick 32s or SLQ 32s. Even to this day, the Navy still uses some newer versions of the SLQ 32. I don't know if these are particular SLQ 32s or if there's something else. Uh, but certainly there are Slick 32s on the Tycos, the OHPs, the um, Sprints class, they all have them. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of other ships also in the game have Slick 32s. Now, uh, so these guys detect these radar signatures. They're not emitting anything, they're just kind of taking them in and figuring out the position that way. And, identif and the operators can see class IDs basically and figure out what the contact is. So that's what's happened here. Over here we've got uh, EM emission as well, we can check the information. Looks like it's some sort of surface search radar and it, it's, idea, it's probably a merchant. So I'm, I'm seeing it go 11 knots down there, so I'm pretty sure that's some sort of merchant vessel. Uh, the thing with going at, to MCON though, I'll pause this right now just to talk about it really quickly. When we're at MCON, uh, the enemy can't see our radar transmissions so if there's anything that we're emitting that they could use to di to classify us now they can't use that at all um, it's kind of like sonar where your emission goes out further than you can uh, get a return so an enemy further away could detect you and you might not necessarily pick them up with your radar uh, but yet you're still broadcasting that you're using your radar and you're giving the enemy some valuable information so a lot of people say you should be at MCON but uh, I don't like to default to that state because there's some considerations about what your platforms can do and what the enemy platforms can do before you make that decision if you think about it 
in this scenario, we've got two cruisers and two destroyers. We're set to go against the Syrian Navy that doesn't have any capital ships. They don't have any advanced Soviet anti-ship missiles like the uh, SS-19Ns. Well, those things go like 350 nautical miles or something like that. Um, so us being at MCON, it's kind of pointless, especially when this jet is, this jet or this MiG-23, I should say, is com coming to go directly right at us. And it eventually, if it doesn't detect what we are right now, it will when it flies over us, right, and it gets in visual range. Uh, and if we had our air search radars off and our surface search, we're blinding ourselves to the whole. Um, environment around us because we're trying to detect somebody secretly or quietly um, and the enemy fleet might not even be going um, might not be even using their radars so it's entirely possible because there's a two-way street here that they're at MCON as well and if they are at MCON we're not going to detect them through this method and we're just sailing around blind but the enemy if he was sailing around blind at MCON as well He's got the advantage in this scenario because he has aircraft. Aircraft can tell him where I'm at. And so he can stay at MCON and he can still see us and I can stay at MCON and I'm just not going to see anybody except this airplane. Um, so the, the reason that I would like to have my radar on is the way that this scenario plays out and, and it would play out the same way all the time even in other setups. The jet will come towards you, they will identify who you are, they will tell the shooter or shooting platforms where you're at, and if they're in range, they're going to shoot at you. If you are at MCON, you will never see those missile launches. If you think of anti-ship missiles, most of them have some sort of boost phase to them, and the boost phase, if you're close enough and you got your air search radar on, you, you should detect it. It'll happen. The the missile will climb to a certain al altitude and then it'll go into sea skimming phase and you won't see it anymore. And um, that gives you valuable information that an attack is coming and it also gives you valuable information that uh, the enemy is right at that spot. If you can see the boost phase, uh, you'll see on the, the radar data the altitude uh, climbing and then going back down and disappearing. You know that that was the boost and you know right or generally in that area there's an enemy ship. Um, if you don't see that, you just kind of see a steady altitude, then yeah, don't suspect that that's a, an enemy launch. Don't fire a harpoon or waste a harpoon going down that bearing. But if you were at MCON, you would never see that. And we're going to do that right now. We'll, we'll switch everybody out back to um, formation orders. We'll, we'll have them turn all their radars on again. Okay. And what's going to happen is we're probably going to be shot at. Let's make sure we have our air defense orders. So everybody will be weapons tight, so they'll only shoot at uh, enemy um, missiles that are in mount. Okay. So this is a, a missile launch, and we'll watch this boost upwards here. See that? See that altitude climb? You know that that's the missile being launched. So when you see something like that, just mark it, and we're going to do a counter fire at it. But like I said, if we were at MCON, we would never see this. And you can make you the argument that uh, I wouldn't have been fired at if I stayed at MCON. But my counter argument to that is this plane is going to see me eventually, and he's going to tell the shooters where I'm at, and this is going to happen. And if I stay at MCON, I would never see this. I would never get this warning. Um, so I wouldn't be able to do this here. Now I can do a salvo of four, kind of put it behind the guy. Do a salvo of two, put it up going this way. Salvo of two. Okay, so these guys will counter fire. We know uh, missiles are inbound now, and um, basically we're going along for the ride. Uh, we can also, just for the scenario's sake, go to weapons uh, free. Everyone should be able to. Alright, everyone should be at weapons free. Yep. Alright, so yeah, I think that's uh, the nitty gritty of, of MCON. The main takeaway is it's a tool to use for surface warfare. Um, and it's one of those things you consider what the threat is. And if you really need to be 
hampering yourself by stopping the use of y some of your advanced sensors. If you know you've got that advantage over the enemy, then you should absolutely u absolutely use it. Uh, use your radars. If you don't suspect that you've got um, a lot of combat mass and capability against the enemy, then certainly try to hide your position and stay at MCON if you can. Uh, but don't always default to using MCON because it's, it's going to make you miss things like this. If I stayed at MCON, I would never see this and I would not be able to fire back at the enemy. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. We'll, we'll leave it at that. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.